this is a new decade, it's the 2020s, but we had 2010 to 2019, a decade full of awesome fragrances. And several weeks ago, I put out my top 25 men's designer fragrances from the 2010s, and today I've got my top 25, sorry, I snuck in one more, so it's 26 fragrances of niche fragrances that are mostly unisex. Some are targeted to men, but all of these, or most of them, can be worn by women and men. So if you want to find out what these fragrances are that I've chosen as my top 25 fragrances from the niche houses from the 2010s, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Let's get right to the list. So I've got 26 fragrances here, and I'm not ranking these in my favorite to my least favorite or vice versa. I'm ranking them from dates, and we're gonna start off with number one. And we're starting off with the year 2010. And the first fragrance on the list is Portrait of a Lady, launched in 2010 from the house of Frederick Mall. And this is all about rose, patchouli, incense, cloves, raspberry, sandalwood, cinnamon, Absolutely delicious. This is a very, very intense fragrance. It's To me, it's a very masculine fragrance, but lots of rose, so maybe it might go feminine. Um, and uh, it's just wonderful wearing experience. Lots of compliments. People tend to really like it. Well, some people do. Um, and I, I've gotten stopped and asked what I'm wearing. And, you know, the reactions are very positive with this one. And I find that it's one of the best releases from the 2010s. And that is Portrait of a Lady, created by Dominique Ropion for Frederick Mall. And that is launched in 2010. One thing you should know about this list is we only have one fragrance from one house, nothing else. And we're going to go right to the next fragrance that was also launched in 2010. And this is from the house of Houbigan. And this is Fougere Royale, this one right here. So this is on this list even though it was initially launched in the 1800s, 1880s, I believe, discontinued, then brought back in 2010. So for me, it's a brand new release. I never sampled it in the old days. This is the first time I sampled it here as this fragrance. And it's a great, great fougere. It is more masculine leaning. Uh, I think women can totally pull this one off. It is very aromatic and green and fougere-like with lots of lavender, geranium, green notes. There's oak moss here, chamomile, bergamot. It's a wonderful, wonderful release from the house of uh, Houbigan. And it's a, it's a awesome for the 2010s. It's one of my favorites. And doing this list, I had to go through fragrances that I've spoken a lot about. I've done a lot of research on my channel. And then there's also some of the underrated ones that I haven't really talked much about. And I had to throw those in as well. Those are the ones that I feel like they're great, but I haven't done much speaking about them. But this one I have spoken a lot about. If you're curious to discover it, you should search this fragrance on my channel and you'll see what I mean about this. But this is Houbigan's Fougere Royale. Going to the house of Le Labo. Again, one fragrance from one house, nothing else. This is from 2010 as well. And this is another 13, this one right here. Why this one? Now this one, I wanted to feature Eccentric Molecules Molecule 1. It was actually launched in the 2000s, not 2010s. But this one actually, it's, it's phenomenal actually. This has an awesome and very, very sexy trail but very, very clean and musky. It's a very, very clean musk with notes of ISO E Super. So you've got the eccentric molecules, kind of cedar sandalwood um, synthetic molecule in there. Then you also have ambergris. You've got, I mean, you've got musk, you've got ambrette, you've got pear note here. And then there's some amyl salicate thrown in as well. But th this one comes alive on people's body chemistry. It smells great when you're smelling it out of the bottle. <clears throat> But when you, you know, sweat and you're wearing it, man, the trail it leaves, it's not a big trail. It's not like a sillage monster, or like a big, massive cloud, things like that. But it's wonderfully sexy. And it's, that's what I like about it. So that's why I find it to be one of the better releases from this house. Initially, it came out as an exclusive for Colette. Since Colette closed, a department store or like a high-end um, 
gift shop in Paris, they put it in uh, the Le Labo boutiques. Another 13, Le Labo 2010. And we're going to the house of Maison Francis Kirkjian. This was a tough one. I had to pick this one. I was initially thinking about Baccarat Rouge, and that's why it's not uh, further down the list. I'm going with the original here, Absolute Pour Le Soir, and I'm actually going to just talk about the what it became as well, the Grand Soir. But Absolute Pour Le Soir is one wonderfully delicious. Um, it's got that musky, uh, funky musky kind of smell with lots of um, um, uh, honeyed amber. There's lots of honey here. There's benzoin, incense, sandalwood, rose. Really, truly wonderful. The kumani kind of aspects under there come through as well and becomes uh, very, very sexy. And uh, I love it. Sadly, I don't think it was popular enough for it to continue. And it was shelved, or actually not shelved, it was actually moved to their boutique uh, exclusive uh, and uh, they came out with Grand Soir, this is what, what it became, which is a, a lot more wearable, it, it's a lot more um, accessible by everyone. It's a sweeter vanillic benzoiny amber with tonka and labdanum. Very, very delicious. Both of them are amazing. I wore so much of it uh, with Grand Soir, that's why I had to go back in time and wear the original that it used to be, because I used to wear it at one point, never as a full bottle, more from decans, and then when I got a little burnt out on this one, I went to this one. Anyway, it's uh, Absolute Pearl of Soir from 2010 and then Grand Soir from 2016. Both excellent offerings from uh, Maison Francis Kirkjian in the 2010s. Now we're going to 2011 and I uh, want to also mention not every year is covered but we do have 2011 and we have one fragrance from 2011. It's from the house of Javoy with a recent uh, review I did of this one like really recently. It's Psychedelic. This is the Patchouli Lover's Patchouli Fragrance Dream Come True. So lots of patchouli here, amber, vanilla, labdanum, musk, geranium. There's some citruses under there, uh, way under there. But this is more about that patchouli. Again, it's a chocolate cakey, boozy, rummy, uh, very dense, deep, earthy, chocolate cakey patchouli. One of a kind, amazing scent, really, really wonderful stuff, long lasting, and uh, I find it sexy. Anyway, Javoy Psychedelic. One of the best from the 2010s, and that's the only one from 2011. Next, going to the house of MDCI, and it's a Chypre Palatin, this one right here. So this one um, is a Chypre fragrance that's not like other Chypre fragrances. Um, for me, this one's a very warm Chypre, like a ambery Chypre, like a musky Chypre. This Tolu balsam you've got in here, you've got Galbanum, there's a Castorium note in there, which is animalic. It does have that muskiness under there. There's some oak moss, of course, with a Chypre, you've got to have that. There is a very uh, kind of like effervescent um, aldehydic touch in here, some fruity touches, and of course throwing that benzoin with the vanillic uh, nuances, it's a wonderful release. Now this one I haven't spoken much about, but I find it to be amazing. It's out of this world amazing, and it's uh, it's ambery. I love that about it, but it's a sheep, uh, then again it's very ambery, very, very unique touches, but uh, to die for one of the best from the 2010s. This is Sheep Palatan, that came out in 2012. Next, going to the house of Aqua de Parma and it's Colonia Oud. It used to be Colonia Intensa Oud. Now they just retitled it to Colonia Oud and recently they've changed the colors of the bottle. It's black now and uh, so I don't have that bottle unfortunately but this one came out in 2012 and it's one of my favorite ouds. It's a western oud. Obviously it's not animalic. It's um, leather with oud, bergamot, orange, amorous, coriander. Um, so there's the oud. It's intense and there's lots of leather in here. In fact the leather in here smells like their leather fragrance which came out after this one was released. But this one has the oud in there as well. And But it's a very, very fresh oud. It's got lots of citruses like the the, uh, the bergamot and the orange are pretty prominent. But still, it's very oudy uh, and a wonderful release. I love it. And one of the best for me. And I really enjoyed it. And I think it's one of the better offerings from the 2010s. So this is Aqua de Parma Colonia Oud from 2012. Now this next one is from the House of Kerosene. It's Unknown Pleasures. And this one came out in 2013. You know me, I love my gourmands, and I love it when it has lemons, because I love desserts with lemons. Um, you can get like lemon um, tarts and things like that, so you've got lots of uh, intense uh, tart lemon flavors sweetened up with sugar. And this one smells like a lemon chiffon cake to me, and oh man, it's so good. It's 
I think this is the best thing that has come out of this house and I just can't get enough of the, the way it smells. It's very, very vanillic. It's sweet, but not overly sweet. It's tart with the lemons. Just a, you know, a magical uh, fragrance that I, I enjoy smelling over and over again. It's just, you know, it's a very, very pleasant smell. It just smells great. When you smell it, when you get through the lemons and the vanillic touches and cakiness, there is some woodiness under there as well. Anyway, Unknown Pleasures, wonderful release from the House of Kerosene from 2013. Another release from 2013, going to the House of Raja Parfums, and this is Creation E, this one right here. I love this one. It's my favorite from this house, and it's it's very, very boozy. Um, a lot of people are saying it's like soda pop or, you know, Coca-Cola or something. I can totally see that. But for me, this one's very, very... Um, uh, it smells gelatinous to me, like succulent. Um, there's co co there's cognac in here, not coke. There's vanilla, there's tobacco, there's benzoin, some zinginess from ginger, some spices from black pepper, but a wonderful, wonderful release. And the wearing experience is to die for, and I love the way it smells. It smells wonderful on me. It smells great. I just It's delicious. And I think... Um, it's perfect for winter wear and I just, you know, put it on and it's cold outside, uh, which we've ha been having a great amount of coldness here this year, which I love. Thankfully, we've got lots of rain and this is working wonderfully in that uh, cool weather. Anyway, this is Raja Parfum's Creation E. This is the Pure Parfum, or it could be also Enigma outside of the USA. So anyway, check that out from 2013. This next one is another Shepra that was launched in 2013 and it's from the house of Oriza El Legrand. This is Shepra Mousse, this one right here. Here, my second bottle. I brought a bottle back with me from Paris about four and a half years ago and every one of my friends that was smelling it wanted to buy decants from me so I you know I decanted a bunch of it and finally I ran out of it and recently I had to order another bottle from Lucky Scent because I wasn't in Paris anywhere, which I should have because I was there in May and I should have just bought another bottle. It would have been a little cheaper than buying it from here. But this one's a very, very unique sheep. It's a very oak mossy sheep bread. There's lots of oak moss here, but you've got some interesting and unique smells in, uh, thrown in, notes in here. That's what makes it really one of the better releases. And just like the Hubagon, this one originally had come out hun uh, not, not hundreds of years ago, many, many uh, decades ago, as the brand was re, um, you know, re-established uh, in the last um, seven or eight years, but the brand used to exist like 20, uh, not perhaps in the early 1900s, somewhere around there. I didn't really do a lot of research. It could also be in the latter 1800s. So it's an older brand that they relaunched the fragrance in 2013. And the notes in here are oak moss, as I said, soil tincture, there's mushroom, there's fennel, there's mint, there's clover, there's angelica, and a ton of other awesome, unique uh, notes that make a very, very unique fragrance. It's very earthy, it's kind of musty, it's soily, it's earthy, it's a chipra, but uh, almost like a green salad chipra with lots of earth thrown in. Very, very unique fragrance. Orza El Legrand, Chipra Mousse, a wonderful release from 2013. All right, so this next one, let me find the fragrance, is from the House of uh, Imaginary Authors, and this happens to be one of the better releases from this house for me. It's a city on fire, and if you like a smoky fragrance, uh, with a soapy undertone, with a light hints of fruits in there. Uh, this is the one for you. But you got to love smoke because it's very, very smoky. And sometimes when you smell it, it does remind you of barbecue. But not the meat part, but the, you know, the barbecuing of the... the coal in the woods and things like that. Um, there's burnt match note in here. There's labdanum for an ambery touch. There's cade, and I think it's the cade that gives it the soapiness. Nard, fruity notes, a very, very unique fragrance. I love, I love this one. As soon as I smelled it back in 2014, uh, Josh had come here from uh, Imaginary Authors to do a show, and he had brought this, and I loved it, and I bought a bottle. Anyway, Imaginary Authors, A City on Fire at, is a, from 2014. And another one from 2014, it's also very smoky, but this one's ashy smoky, and this one's from the house of um, Tiziana Terenzi, and this is La Dino Nero, this one right here. Now, a lot of people say this one reminds them of Black Afghano. I can totally see that, but this is a unique take on it, if it is a, a clone or a copy, um, which I, uh, I guess I really don't know if it's really a clone or copy, because this one has cognac, 
and you can really, really pick up the cognac in here. And it reminds me of the cognac in uh, Raja Parfum's uh, Creation E. But everything else is different with this one because you've got incense, lots of incense. There's oud, there's tobacco, amber, labdanum for the, um, you know, the, the ambery smoky touches, oak and honey, very woody, very dry. It's a little moisture and a sweetness from the cognac note. Uh, the labdanum adds some sweetness as well, but it's a very, very wonderful fragrance. It's, it's dark, it's gray, it's smoky, it's ashy, it's burnt. Great, great smoky fragrance. Tiziana Terenzi Lada Nero from the tw uh, 2010s at number uh, 2014 uh, year. So this next one was a love at first sniff, but a blind buy. Uh, back in 2014, I did a video about it when I first got it, and I fell head over heels for it, and it was a blind buy. First time I had ever experienced um, Parfums of Marley, and Herod is the very first fragrance I bought, and I really fell in love with it. It's all about tobacco and vanilla. You got tobacco, vanilla, cinnamon. There's a fruity touches in there with the osmanthus note. There is a little bit of incense in there as well. There's some smoky touches, but not a lot. And there's also some spiciness from black pepper. A wonderful concoction. Um, a lot of people say it reminds them of tobacco vanilla. I don't get the connection at all. They're completely different. Uh, but, um, you know, people's noses are different. You smell different things and you might smell something that's reminding you more of the tobacco vanilla. I just don't think they're close at all. Um, very different uh, combination of notes, but a unique and sexy and classy, um, uh, what do you call it, tobacco fragrance compared to Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille, which comes off very sharp and aggressive. This one has some class to it. It's not as uh, intense, it's more subtle, but still a really, really wonderful release. It's Herod from the House of uh, Parfums of Marley, wonderful release from 2014. Now this next one, I had a review back on the old channel, same with the Herod as well when they when it first came out, I had a review. This one I haven't spoken much about, and I was going through the collection of fragrances from this house, and I I like, I looked at this fragrance, and I'm like, this is a wonderful release, very, very underrated, not a lot of people talk about it, and it's amazing. It's a leather from the house of Amouage, it's Journeyman right here. In fact, I might actually have to do another review of this one, because this rocks. It's amazing. So this one is from 2014, and it, for the notes, you've got Sichuan pepper, so it's peppery, uh, spicy. There's tobacco in here. There's a tobacco touch. And then there's incense. Throw in some leather. It's, it's, it's a leather. I pick up a lot of leather. And the leather reminds me of the Tuscan leather type of leather, but it is more about tobacco with incense and leather than rather than just uh, leather. And so there's also some juniper berry thrown in, some cypriol. You definitely pick up the cypriol note in here. It's prominent. But all of it is such well-blended. Um, that I really love it. I gotta pull this out and keep uh, start wearing it again because it's just a great scent. It has great longevity, smells awesome. It's a leather that you can tolerate. It's not overly pungent. It's spices in there, the tobacco, incense, one of a kind. Journeyman from 2014 from the house of Amouage. Just like the Maison Francis Kirch and Absolute Pour Le Soir and Grand Soir, this one is from the house of uh, Montal and this is Intense Cafe. This is another one of those great fragrances that was launched in 2014. I think 2014 is a great year, lots of great offerings. And I fell in love with this one. It was a blind buy and it was a love at first sniff. Uh, it's just love it. And it's one of my favorite fragrances from this house and one of my favorite releases from the 2010s. I can't get enough of it. A lot of people smell this on me. A lot of women, I, I, I don't hear a lot of men talk about this one, um, but um, I, I love it and a lot of women fall in love with it and I've shown them where they sell it or I've ordered it for them, helping them get um, um, the fragrance themselves. But this one's all about rose, coffee, vanilla, musk, floral notes, amber, a great combination. It smells like a, a rosy milk uh, coffee latte, latte mixed together. Really, really delicious concoction. And I have to also mention Ristretto Intense Co Cafe, which came out last year, and I think it's a great advance of the original with a more robust and more intense dark coffee thrown in amped, amped up in there so it's still this but more of a coffee uh, note like the the coffee is boosted so more caffeine if you like caffeine but this one's about coffee rose vanilla caramel thrown in there some musk amber woody uh, notes etc really really beautiful delicious fragrance i think it's my favorite from the house of montal both of them amazing scents so this is montal's intense cafe and of course ristretto intense cafe 2014 2019. next going to the house of uh, atelier des Ors, and this is lune feline this one right here 
So I bought this in 2015, January. They had just put it out at Javoy like just weeks prior. And this is a lot of 2014 launch. And I bought it and I was obsessed with the way this vanilla smelled. It's lots of vanilla, it's peru balsam, there's cardamom, there's cinnamon, ambergris, lots of like musky undertones, uh, just really, really delicious uh, vanilla. Spicy and intense. And the bottle is to die for. And uh, that's one of the kind of like things that kind of drew me in. I had checked out the Hill brand at Javoy when they put this out. And I bought the bottle, I mean the fragrance, and I brought it back. And it's a great vanilla uh, fragrance. If you like spicy vanilla fragrances, definitely try Lunfaline. Wonderful, wonderful offering. One of the best in my collection from the 2010. Going to the house of Memo Paris, it's African Leather. Now this one is launched in 2015. This is a wonderful release. I think it's the best for me from this house, although they have a lot of great releases, but probably this is the one that gets the most hype or the most attention. And African Leather is part of their leather series. They've got a lot of le leathers, a lot of leathers, uh, but this one's all about cardamom. Uh, you've got leather, of course, saffron, cumin, vetiver, patchouli, geranium, a very, very spicy, intense, aromatic, and pungent take on leather. I feel like the aromatics and the spices are a little stronger than the leather, so if you're opposed to the the, the, the strongness or the strength of leather and you want less leather and you want aromatics and spices, definitely check out African Leather. You're going to like it. It's a great cardamom fragrance. And that came out in 2015. Next, go into the house of Diptyque. It's Oud Palau. This is one of the best niche uh, Oud fragrances. Um, it is on the funky side and you've got to like that funky fra Oud fragrance. Um, they're using... Um, uh, what do you call it? They're using Laotian oud in here from Laos. So it's, I guess maybe that kind of oud goes into kind of like funky uh, territory. Um, so it does have some animalic um, musky touches. But you got lots of rose in here as well. There's some tobacco. There is some rum. So there's a, a boozy undertone there. It's like a booziness there. There's leptanum, so for the ambery touches, there's smokiness here as well. Sandalwood, camphor note. It's it's a great, great release. I feel like this is um, Diptyque's Udis, Udis Behan's older, a little more wilder, a little more mature and funkier um, brother, perhaps, if, if Udis Behan is a, a woman. But uh, an awesome. It's a very, very butch, uh, uh, what do you call it? Oud fragrance, musky and animalic. Great stuff. Oud Palau from the year 2015 from the House of Diptyque. And ever since they came out with Oud Palau, I think they've gotten solid releases since then. They, they keep releasing great releases, uh, Diptyque, the House of Diptyque. And I love this house. Going to the House of Zerjoff, Naxos. Now, you know, doing this list is a little uh, complicated. You have to pick and choose and see which ones are the ones that you wear the most to, to mention. Like for Frederick Mall, I think Muscrabajur was in the 2010s. I didn't double check, but I was really wanting to put Muscrat Azur. I decided to go with Portrait of Lady because that's the very first fragrance I bought from the house. And with Zerjoff's Naxos, I feel like this is the one I wear the most. I like it because it's warm, it's spicy, it's aromatic. It's got the lavender note here, and it also has honey and tobacco and tonka beans, cinnamon, vanilla. Very, very beautiful, and I love wearing it. And this is also one of the lesser expensive Zerjoffs. It's under two, it's around two hundred dollars for a hundred ml. So um, if you like, uh, you know, uh, niche fragrances, and you like a Zerjoff as a brand, and you you, you want to pick up a bottle, this one is not going to be overly expensive like some of their other fragrances. And it does remind me of Pure Havan. They are a little different, of course. But if you have Pure Havan and you can't afford this, obviously you stick with your Pure Havan. But if you like the idea of one that has more lavender because this like as I said has a lot of lavender compared to pure Havan then this is the one you should try so this is Naxos from Zerjoff from the year 2015 okay this next one I've spoken about here and there a few times but uh, I, I, it's one of the better offerings from this particular house and in the x-ray concentration version that they sell compared to their EDP or parfum it's to die for. This is Rose de Taif from the House of Paris Monte Carlo in the X-ray version. And this rose is probably, uh, well, Portrait of a Lady is rose, but you have a lot more going on with it. This is just all about rose, and it's just to die for. Everyone that I've turned this one on to has to have a bottle, and uh, they kind of like, don't like the fact that this is so expensive because they like the X-ray compared to the EDP. They love that concentrated, um, 
quality of the fragrance. It's really, really dense, like really dense. You only need a few sprays and the thing will last forever. But with this one, it's Taif Rose. That's why it's called Rose de Taif X-Ray from 2015, Taif Rose. You got regular rose or whatever regular rose is. Geranium, lemon, ambra, rome. But it's a great combination of very lemony roses together. The lemons are not tart, they're sweeter lemons, almost like, um, uh, not candied, but syruped lemons or um, preserved lemons, I should say. What a wonderful release. Check it out. Paris Monte Carlo Rose de Taif X-Ray. Love it. All right, this next one's from the year uh, 2016, and it's from Forte Manly. It's Charlatan. Probably still one of my favorite offerings from this house. Just gorgeous. Wonderful release. Lots of jasmine here. The jasmine is on the funky side, a little bit dirty. But then you got rose, you've got pear, chocolate, truffles, vanilla, osmanthus, Great, great combination of uh, notes. Wonderful offering. Now, it does hint at Noir de Noir for me, the, the fragrance from Tom Ford. M minus, like, uh, well, this one has the addition of jasmine, but once you remove it, then it really reminds me of Noir de Noir. And that jasmine in here is um, adding that uh, kind of a funky, kind of uh, slightly fecal animalic quality to the fragrance. I don't get it as much. Some people do, uh, but I like it. I like that little dirty edge thrown in compared to Noir de Noir. Just a sexy fragrance. Charlatan from the House of Fortune Manley at uh, 2016 launch. All right, this next one is from the House of Etat Libre de Orange. It's You or Someone Like You. This one I had to throw in there because it's so good. It's just very, very straightforward, very clean, very fresh, very aromatic, very green. Oh man, it reminds me of mint, chopped up mint, which I've been around my whole entire lifetime uh, living with my family. Um, we love mint. Uh, it's one of our favorite herbs. But I can only tolerate mint in fragrances if it's a certain kind of smell. I don't like it if it's toothpaste. I like it if it's very fresh, real herbs chopped up. And this one reminds me of that. It's a very light fragrance, so be careful. I mean, don't wear it in the winter. You're not going to get anything out of it. I mean, you are. I'm smelling it here, but it's, it comes alive in the heat and humidity. It's wonderful. It's just, I love it. Nothing groundbreaking, but a very, very beautiful fragrance. Like, smells great. Anyway, Atelier Brut Orange, You Are Someone Like You from 2017. Awesome release of the 2010s. Next one is from the House of By Killian. It's Black Phantom, this one right here. Well, there are a lot of fragrances from this house that I have. A lot of them came out before 2010, still are great. But this one came out in 2010s. It was either up to this one or Intoxicated. After all, I went with this one. Uh, I, I, I pull for it more. And this one is rummy. It's very boozy. And there's lots of caramel. So it's sweet. There's chocolate in there. It's chocolatey. There's coffee, sugar, almonds. Gourmand. Boozy. Chocolatey. Um, it's delicious. It's really, really delicious. Black Phantom, uh, I don't get the name connection, but I guess I, I don't really need to get the name because the fragrance itself speaks for itself. It's just a really, really boozy concoction that I really enjoy wearing. And it's perfect in this weather that we're having now in January. Anyway, Black Phantom launched in 2017 from the House of By Killian. Awesome release. It's getting down to the uh, last few fragrances here. This is from 2017 as well, and we're going to the House of Tower Perfumes, and this is a Cour de Desert, this one right here. This is a flanker to his original uh, one that came out from the 2000s. Um, it's the Laird de Desert Marocaine. And this one here is a little more, I, I guess it's not as dry as the original fragrance, which I find to be very dry. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it, but if I had one or the other, I would pick this one because I just love the way it performs on me. It's a little, uh, as I said, it's not as dry and I have dry skin, so dry skin on, dry fragrances on dry skin don't last as long. So the fact that this is a lot more gooey ambers, it has better performance on me. But with this one, you've got lots of balsamic notes or balsamics thrown in there. With ambergris, there's woody notes. There's patchouli. It's still dry, don't get me wrong, but you have the Tower Odd in here, the Tower Perfumes DNA, and it's wonderful. There's some muskiness in there as well, and I think it's a great, great flanker from 2017, and one of the great, better fragrances from this house, um, hands down. Love it. Tower Perfumes, A Cour de Desert from 2017. Great, great release. Next, going to the house of Nishane. It's Hachiva, this one right here. Now, they have a lot of fragrances. I had to go with one that I keep using a lot of, and I keep wearing this one because I love it. It's so strong. It's so intense. It's so fruity. It's so oak mossy. It's so woody. It's just 
sparkles. I love that about it. And it's very, very long lasting and it does have crowd pleasing uh, qualities. This is from 2017. There's lots of pineapple with oak moss, grapefruit, bergamot, woody notes, patchouli, sexy, classy. Um, what, what else can I say? Intense, long lasting. Um, I love it. I love wearing it. Um, it seems like a woman like it as well. Some of my friends love it. And of course, a lot of guys like this one as well. And uh, yeah, okay, we can say it kind of smells like Aventus, but yes, it does, and no, it doesn't. Anyway, Hachivat is amazing from this house, but as I said, they have lots of great fragrances, and I'm only picking one fragrance from each house for this video. So Hachivat from 2017. And last but not least, go into the house of uh, Parfums du Cita from 2018. It's uh, Fleur de Lalita. I love this one. Um, what I like about this one is that galbanum note thrown in or mixed in with lily and then also with magnolia. So this is a very floral fragrance. You've got to love floral notes. But that galbanum stands out so much it adds a sexy layer to it. Very pungent green quality, the galbanum. It's a note that I really love and I've come to love. If you want to find out more about galbanum, check out a fragrance by Chanel called number 19. It's all galbanum. But with this one, it is galbanum, but you've got all those floral notes thrown in. And there's some muskiness from Ambrette. Very, very sexy. Very sexy. Um, I get lots of uh, scent memories with this one. Reminds me of something that I can't put my nose on, but it's so good. And I think it's one of my favorites from the 2010s. Parfums du Cita, Fleur de Lalita. I love it. Love, love, love it. Anyway, that's my list. Those are my 26 favorite releases from the 2010s. This was a very tough uh, list to do, but I had to pick and choose and decide which ones I'm going to do. I mean, I can do 50, 100, but I gotta put a stop at 26. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Do you like these? Do you hate them? What were some of your favorites from the 2010s? Niche fragrances, please. We do have, do have a separate video for men's designer releases from the 2010s. If you're curious to watch it, I'll have a link below, a pinned link. You can click that and watch it. Other than that, guys, let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. As I said, please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.